e-commerce. As an e-commerce owner, I have my store. Obviously, COVID-19 is going on. A lot of people aren't really interested in probably buying products. I don't want to seem insensitive with my ads. What do I do during this time? Like, what do I do? Try and keep afloat and not seem like an insensitive person trying to sell, 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 but it's still important to keep my business alive. Right. Obviously, there's not going to be any single uh, best answer for this. Uh, <laughs> but based on what I have seen in the market uh, and what I'm recommending my clients to do, obviously, number one, do you have a digital product or service that you can sell? Uh, I had one client that literally had to shut down their operations because all they did was in-person events. And I had brought this up before that, and I know that this isn't strictly e-commerce, but it's a similar aspect of, you know, one of my, another clients is an e-commerce client here in California. They literally cannot ship product from their warehouse because they're considered an unnecessary business or unessential business. So they had to close that down. So, um, you know, you might not even be able to ship product, but assuming that you can still ship product, you know, do you have, can you transfer that into a digital product or a digital service? Uh, if you can, then obviously this is a great time to invest and launch that. If you can't, uh, you do need to keep your business alive, but you also have to remember that we are going to enter a recession. And in a recession, a lot of, a lot of things are going to happen. So you may not be able to get those sales even if you do advertising, but you want to be able to retain your customers so that when we start to get out of this, or when people get a little bit more, um, uh, have a little bit more confidence in their future, that they will begin to spend on your product again. So you want to be there. When you say to try and create a digital product, let's say that I sell um, supplements online, but now I can't sell supplements. What kind of ideas or digital products could I create for my customers that would be lead magnets? So if you sell supplements online, you, uh, you might have a degree in nutrition or you probably have some expertise that when people send you an email, hey, I often get colds. Is there any supplement you recommend? Or hey, I'm trying to diet. What supplements do you recommend? Now, this is sort of a gray zone because some of this is approved by the FDA and, and some yeah. may not be. But, but nevertheless, you do have experience. You do have expertise. This is something where you can consult with people on. So hey. remarketing your credibility and your information in a way that's still um, providing help for customers. Yes. Oh, you're okay. You're providing a consulting service now on here is the best way because they may not be buying from you mm -hmm. when they go to you know a Walmart or a Target or wherever, uh, they may be able to pick it up. And you want to be the one that told them that it's essential right now I'm not a scientist, but what I've been told is vitamin D, naturally getting vitamin D from the sun is, is very important when we're inside all days. There might be other things. There might be things like, well, if you're on a diet of limited items, you really want to make sure that you at least eat these items as a replacement for the supplements you might have been taking before. Um, things of that sort, you want to be helpful. That's the key thing. Number one, you want to continue to show up, right? And number two, when you show up, you want to be helpful and serve your community. Ideally, you serve your community through selling them product. If you can't sell them product, you try to sell them another thing, information product perhaps, or yeah. a digital service. And if you can't do that, you at least wanna, you wanna be there providing them information and building upon that friendship because people really need guidance and people are very lonely right now and they're looking for help in all sorts of areas. And trust me, if you help them now, they will be a loyal customer for life. They will remember that. And I think that's something that we often forget in these times. Okay, so let's suppose that I have my digital product, but because of everything that's going on, I see a complete slump in my traffic. Not many people are coming to my website. I have the digital product that's going to be my lead magnet so that I can get emails and names that I can help to remarket after the recession or during this time. How do I get people to my store? How do I push people to my store? Um, again, seeming helpful, but without being too pushy. So first of all, it has to be aligned with what we're going through. If you are afraid of getting the coronavirus and you are at home, working from home, or maybe even recently lost your job, what is going to be important for you to have in terms of a product or a service? If your product fits that, that's awesome, right? If your product doesn't fit that, you are knocking on people's doors when not only might they not be interested, but potentially offended. 
So that's really the key thing here. Is there any way in which you can position your product or service as something that can help people? Because if it can, then it is totally okay to advertise. Advertisements are still going on. TV ads are still going on. Now, a lot of those are just reminders that we're here to help, right? And they do that to maintain brand awareness. Also, what, what I have heard happening, and I've yet to see the data conclusively, but with so many companies just freaking out and pulling out of advertising, it's actually lowering the supply of ads while the demand for content is only going up and up and up because everyone's on home looking at social media. So I've already heard reports that actually uh, advertising pricing is sort of going down a little bit right now, meaning that it actually might be to your benefit to do this. But the key thing is, is this something that's helping people? And can you clearly articulate that so it doesn't look like you're selling, and, but you're helping? And this is something that we've been talking about in, in social media marketing for, for a long time now. This is nothing new, but most companies have not done their marketing this way, right? So we're, we're talking about you know, being more human, having more empathy, not selling to people, but actually helping people. And if you haven't been doing that, now's a really, really good time to start because you can help a lot of people. You're already helping people. It's just a matter of aligning your, your messaging with the times of today so that it doesn't look like a blatant advertisement, but it looks like you're truly helping people. And if you do that, if it's a lead magnet, the top 10 things you need to be eating when you're at home, when you can't exercise outside, there's all sorts of things coming through people's minds. I have a client of mine that actually has a, uh, a Slack related product. Oh, so, really? Yeah. So uh, it's, it's an efficiency tool for software development. So they are going, they, they hired me like a week. They hired me like the day before lockdown started, but it was already coronavirus time. Right. And they went aggressively on the ads because they, they can truly help people. And they're a startup and they want to get the word out. They are going as fast as possible, move fast and, and break things style <laughs> marketing. And I'm supporting them as much as I can, right? Okay. Um, so just because it's like any other recession, this one's a little bit special because there's a danger to our health, right? Where the yes. other ones have that. But so long as you're aware that life still goes on, this is not going to last forever. And people are online all the time. But and what if I have a product? I can ship out my products. But what if my customers are afraid to order products from me? Well, I would say that a lot of companies have been doing this as well, but you need to be very clear as to what you as a company are doing to prevent the spread of COVID-19. This, it goes without saying. How I can would, I do that? How, how would I go about doing that without saying, Hey guys, we're COVID free. Like what's the proper channels? What's the proper way for me to tell people that they can trust that the product that they get when it's delivered, it's safe. Well, I think you see a lot of these uh, when you go to any online store, even Amazon, you know, these are the things we're doing to uh, prepare for COVID-19. You see that at the top, whether it be, you know, everybody, uh, everybody in the warehouse, you know, from, uh, from product to box, they're all wearing, you know, PPE or they're wearing masks or gloves. We are, you know, sanitizing all of our product before shipping. But at the end of the day, I would also say, you know, the product does go through an intermediary. Right. So at the end of the day, uh, on CNN, uh, Dr. Sanjay Gupta had a really good video of here's how to sanitize everything that, before you bring it into your house. And I think that's regardless of whether they buy from you, whether they buy from Amazon, or whether they go to a Costco. It's the same thing. It so is you're saying sense. I should reassure them that I have a policy at, at my business, but also educate them on how to sanitize even after they've gotten their product? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Then you're really then then you're saying by the way experts recommend that you should be doing this for anything you bring in from the outside you should have a decant contamination zone that you know the data shows that COVID nineteen lasts on certain materials longer than others and really provide that information that that is a way that you can help people then they can say they found out from you and fortunately or hopefully they'll get that information out to their friends as well. Um, and, and we can begin to educate more people. So yes, uh, always use proven trusted sources. You know, some would say CNN is not a trusted source. So go, go to the CDC or go to the health authorities in your country that are issuing statements. But there's a lot of information available now that you can point to that says, by the way, even when we ship, make sure you do this. I don't even think Amazon is doing that. I think they should. But um, I, I think there's enough information online now that more and more people are doing this. So have a COVID policy, connect with people, align my ad message with what's going on so that it shows that I'm helping 
And you're also saying, remember to just give that extra information, even if it doesn't involve you, but it involves my customers. Okay, but what Absolutely. if I want to work with influencers for my, or what if I'm already working with influencers for my e-commerce store? What, what, I don't know, what would you suggest? So I was waiting for you to say that. So, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I do have clients that because they can't ship product, they're just, they've completely unplugged their ad spend and they're going to save it up for the remainder of the year, right? So if you're in a situation where you can't get the revenue in, you're going to scale down your marketing. Totally okay. There's a lot of the stuff I talked about can be done organically for free through email marketing, getting the message out there on your website, organic social media, maybe a little boost here and there if you need to, but it, you know, you can do this for free, but what you can be doing now in this time where time is really a precious currency, because we've always been saying we never have time to do this or that we got right. plenty of time now use it wisely. Have you revised your website recently? You know, is it optimized for conversions? Um, are you using, you know, Wishpond to the extent of all the functionalities it has, right? Can you build new lead magnets? And re in relation to that, I'd say the same thing with influencers. This may not be the best time to do influencer campaigns. I, I think a lot of companies are, are sort of, you know, put that on pause. It doesn't mean you can't be developing relationships with influencers, with new influencers or deepening relationships with those influencers that you already have, inviting them on, doing a video like this on your IGTV, right? Uh, right. Because if those influencers are the perfect, you know, role model that your customers look up to, which is why you're working with those influencers, why wouldn't you bring them in for some content co-creation, for a webinar on how to stay safe, whatever it might be, that's how you really intelligently use influencers today and maybe use some of that marketing budget you had for ads and use it towards influencers to help get the word out, stay top of mind, continue to build your list and build, you know, uh, positive karma with that influencer that's going to pay dividends because they are also in the same situation as you. They're right. as well, right? That so makes you, sense. you can be a big help to them. Okay. So I can also still cultivate relationships with influencers, but I can also organically reach right at this moment, use my time wisely. I can revise my website. I can go through my orders. Maybe there are people who have subscription services that I can reach out to. Maybe that will help to boost sales. But what if I've already started a marketing campaign in my influencer and it's going out right now? What, what do I do? Well, um, that raises a really, really good question because in a lot of contracts, there's terminology like force majeure of, of you know, in case of a worst case scenario. And I, I don't think pandemics are, are included in that language in a lot of contracts. Yeah. So it's sort, of, it's sort of a gray zone, right? And I know that as a speaker, uh, speaking at events, that I was supposed to speak in Mexico City and, and, and Belgrade, Serbia next month. And that's obviously been postponed. Not right. Postponed. So there are considerations that if it doesn't make sense to run that campaign right now, to have that talk with the influencer and say, you know, it's obvious it, if this does not make any of us look good or, hey, Mr. Influencer, Mrs. Influencer or Miss Influencer, Ms. Influencer, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> um, it, you know, looking at the situation, does it make sense to continue the campaign as is or is there another way in which another angle we can take to make it more aligned with what's going on today? Right. Because influencers don't want to hurt their reputation either. They don't want to damage the, you know, the, the, the relationship they have with their community. And a lot of that's been going on. Yeah. So have that conversation with every influencer and they may agree. You know what? Let's just every let's take a one month at a time. Let's sync up again next month. Um, I, I wouldn't cancel because you don't want to cancel relationships, but it's a temporary postponement. But things will get back to normal. OK. All right. Uh, so I would say while I'm doing this, what are ways that I can stay connected and update with my e-commerce shoppers? Well, uh, organic social media and email. And if, you know, email marketing for e-commerce is key and, you know, using uh, marketing automation and different triggers, it is a great time to get back in touch with people that haven't bought from you in a while, people that have never bought from you. Um, maybe create a loyalty program if you haven't or add new tiers or I, I know I got an email from uh, United Airlines last night there you know they're extending the mileage plus tiers for another year and they're lowering the requirements for this year so there are things you can do you know every time you're sending out an email that helps someone it's just a little it's a little nice touch that you add to that relationship that's really gonna help them so these are obviously you know uh, email is, is a way that you know you're gonna directly impact them right 
um, organic social is just, you can be sharing a lot of things. So I was going to um, say before when we were talking about, uh, you know, provide content that helps people, even if it's not related to your business, you've probably been doing that in social media, right? Every time you have like a happy Thanksgiving, happy Valentine's Day, if it's not directly related to your business, you're posting that content for engagement, right? Yeah, in, so in true. In terms of content buckets, they're, they're engagement content. Well, this is the new type of engagement content and it's educational and it's really helping people. And that's what you should be replacing that with. And that's really the, the best way to think about it. No, it may not be directly related, but indirectly it's on top of everybody's mind, including your own. And if you think it can help people and you can put a little spin on it based on you know, your company and what industry you're in, it's really gonna help a lot of people. You know, if you're in the gym industry, obviously you, you have a different uh, picture to paint than if you are a restaurant as to, you know, what you should be doing. Or like I said, you know, industry by industry, you have your own little angle um, at which you can, you know, I, I know like locally, speaking of restaurants, a lot of restaurants now are offering take home alcohol. Hey, you, you enjoy our craft beer, you can now take it home with, you, with your dinner, right? Um, yeah. so there, are, there are a lot of little things like that, or hey, um, here's a real-time video monitor so that you can see what the line is like for takeout. You know, feel free to schedule time when there's nobody in line so that you can maintain social distancing. There's, there's a lot of little things you can do to show that you're helping and doing your best while also keeping top of mind, even in this time of crisis, if you do it you know, smartly. Okay, all right, I would say uh, what did What's um, probably two or three things that you would want to say to e-commerce owners right now who are just worried and listen to everything that you have to say? What are three things, two or three things that you'd like to share with them? Yeah, I, I think that digital product or service, uh, being able to develop that, because this pandemic is, it, we're going to get back to normal, but it's going to come in waves. I think right now we're seeing in Japan, they thought they were over it, and now they're about to declare a state of emergency. Uh, so, and in fact, they're looking at six month lockdowns in some provinces there. Oh, wow. So, so and, and, and they say this may, you know, happen again in the fall and then next year. So we need to prepare for that. And you really need to develop a digital product or service if you cannot ship product now, or if your product is just not in demand uh, because of the situation we're in. That is just the number one thing. And if it means consulting or something, even if it means it's something you cannot sell right now, at least build a community of your customers around it, provide free webinars to get the word out, you may end up evolving into another company altogether. So that's number one, because learning, you know, there, there's a huge economy growing in digital learning, if, if we haven't noticed over the last yep. few weeks. So, so there, there might be a role. There, I, I know a content marketing agency that is now going to launch a blogging academy because they've lost most of their retainer clients, right? Same thing. So that's number one, okay? Number two is... This is, uh, this is not the time to pull the plug. You still need to show up for your community, but you need to be helpful in everything you do, right? Whether it's advertising, whether it's organic or it's email messages, think of the different ways. Think of the communication you receive from other companies and what you find helpful and not helpful. It's time to really put, you know, as, as marketers, we're always trying to put our, ourselves in the shoes of our customers. Well, now you really need to do it also from a psychological, you know, spiritual, mental uh, aspect and really try to, figure out what they're going through and what little things you can do to try to help them. The third one is influencers are not going to go away. And this is really a great time to develop that, those relationships. You may find ways of collaborating with influencers that just might generate revenue. Like the influencers, you know what? I want to build an academy. Let's build one together. I, I don't know, right? I'm just throwing out ideas. Yeah. But influencers are creative content creators. They also have a community. They're also in business, right? They're in yeah. the same boat as you. You never know what might happen if you reach out to those influencers you always work with. Uh, and you can reach out to new influencers as well. You know, we're in pause right now, but when we're out of this, we want to go full steam ahead and we'd like to, you know, we'd like to have conversations with you. And from each of those conversations, you're going to learn a tremendous amount of what your customers are going through. So those are my three big picks or, or my three little bits of, of advice for everybody uh, in the e-commerce world listening to this. Okay, that's amazing. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, it was a handful, uh, but it was, I mean, if you have an e-commerce store, creating a digital product, making sure that you just do your audits, um, reaching out to customers you haven't sold to or you're selling to, also remember to build your relationship with your customers and create content that speaks with them rather than to them, as well as remember Influencer marketing is not going to stop because of this crisis, and it's the perfect time to just build relationships, put things on pause, and see where there are opportunities for you guys to grow together. Okay? Absolutely.